Hey, how's it going? This is our third video about cold gear. We're going to concentrate on the area from your waist, about your waist, to about your neck, um, as far as gear to wear to combat the cold. Um, this video is not going to be very exciting, but it's about what works. Um, there are some tech stuff in the video, and then there's some very mundane, run-of-the-mill uh, layers of clothes that we use. Um, biggest thing is layers. Layers, layers, layers. Um, you want to be able to move in those layers, but you want layers so you can take layers off. Uh, you know, if the temperature changes, you get a little too warm. Um, but uh, let's start off with some of the more technical stuff. Um, we had talked about base layers before. Um, this is a little bit lighter base layer than, well, quite a bit technically than the four we're using. No, I'm not talking about the weight of the base layer. Um, I'm talking about the level of uh, warmth. Um, this is a level two. Um, some people will even use it in racing situations, ski racing as, as their layer. Um, the one layer that they use for a race or something like that. Um, but anyways, um, this is like a level two. It's an Under Armour again. Um, they talk about it not being as heavy, but it's probably, um, as far as its warmth ability, um, but it's probably better than, than the average, well, I know it's better than the average Long Johns. Um, it wicks away moisture. Um, from the skin so that when you maybe you're a little warm and you're exercising you're working so you start to sweat a little bit it keeps that your skin dry so that later on when you cool down you don't have that wet um, sweat which will get cold and you can freeze um, so that's another base layer that we can wear when we're not wearing you know a number three or a number four um, and then I the next thing is really just a mundane everyday, mundane everyday T-shirt um, is the next layer that I that I wear. You notice this is a work one. Uh, it is clean, but it's got stains on it. Um, you know, work with trees and all that stuff, and stuff gets on it. You wash it, and then the stains stay in. Um, really, just an everyday basic Canes or a or a Fruit of the Loom or whatever um, T-shirt is fine. Nothing special, just you know, any old cotton or whatever t-shirt um, works. The reason why I don't put that on is the first layer is obviously, for one thing, that particular one's a compression, a compression fit. Uh, the other ones are, uh, um, aren't compression, they're uh, fitted. Um, and obviously that affects the fit, but more importantly, it takes away from that ability for it to wick away because your t-shirt would be underneath it. So I put the t-shirt over it um, it gives you another layer of warmth for your core, for one thing, a little bit like a vest does, um, for those of you that use vests for different things. Um, and it also offers a level of protection for that base layer garment, should you get down to the point where you're wearing just the base layer garment and a t-shirt, which sometimes that does happen if the temperature changes that much or if you've worked that much that you've warmed up enough that you really get down to that layer. Um, and in a lot of those cases you can just push up your sleeves a little bit, still be warmer or whatnot. Um, usually it's in the, you know, in the, the late part of the season towards spring that you get into those kind of conditions. Um, but enough said about that. So I said just a basic t-shirt. And, um, you know, I usually put those two things on and obviously my, my, uh, my pants and all that and have that already on but I won't put on my other layers yet until I actually get to the job site because driving over there um, you know you're, you should be in a nice warm truck um, so um, or any or other vehicle so you don't want to have all your cold gear on and you know you're sitting there sweating in the truck or your body gets used to having all that gear on and then you step out into the real world where you know, the temperature is much lower and you get a little cold because your body has become acclimated to being in the truck. Um, so.
So what I usually do is I, I put my gear um, in shopping bags, you know, usually three of them, but, um, you know, and I'll put my gloves and all that stuff in there too. That way they don't get jumbled around the cab and lost and, you know, end up on the floor and stepped on and all that good stuff. So I'll, I'll put them in there. Um, and usually, um, for, for a, uh, what I call a, a working man's base layer, sometimes we'll talk about some of the techier stuff a little later in the video. Um, I'll just use an ordinary um, uh, hooded sweatshirt. It's not extra thick. It's not, you know, it's just a basic texture. Although I will recommend this, this uh, sweatshirt because it's very economical. Um, and it's, it's decent quality. It's not, you know, it isn't something super high end, but yet it's not a cheap piece of crap. It's a, a decent, just basic run of the mill hooded uh, sweatshirt. It's a Fruit of Loom uh, sweatshirt. It happens to be a large, um, good shirts because they're like, I can get them for, it's either $9.97 or $10.97. So under 11 bucks for one of these. Um, and they're decent and you know, they wear pretty good, um, you know, they don't fall apart, you know, they're not absolutely indestructible what sweatshirts are anyway, but they wear pretty good. Um, so I'll use one of them. Um, and then, uh, so there's that, that would be the first layer that you put on. And then a lot of times over that, I will take a sweatshirt. This happens to be the same color as that sweatshirt, same the same exact sweatshirt only it's a zip up version of it um, I also like the I like the hoodies not because I like hoodies because um, a lot of times I find hoodies a little bit annoying but it's nice to have that hood that you can put on um, sometimes you might even put the hood on and not even have your hat on at different times um, so it's nice that that's there um, sometimes I'll take the drawstrings out because they get pulled out and so on and so forth so I'll take them right out um, sometimes, and then sometimes I'll leave them in. Um, but the zip-on version makes it easier to put it on. Um, I actually got these when I got injured, and that way I could put a long sleeve shirt on, and I didn't. I could just zip it up because I couldn't pull it over my head. Um, so uh, you know that's that's the layer above that. And then usually what I'll do um, is. I'll bring another sweatshirt with me, a little bit bigger. Sometimes you can get away with those two being the same size, but sometimes you might want to, you know, increase your size as you put layers on. Um, you know, you want to be able to move in your layers, and you want to be able to, you know, the, to go on over the other layers. Um, and then uh, I have this other sweatshirt that actually, you know, it's just a basic cotton sweatshirt. It's bigger than those, um, and it fits right over those. Um, I'm not going to bother with what brand it is, um, just happen to be a free sweatshirt I get, which brings me to another point is sometimes something like that can just work for you and sometimes you're better off because you're going to be, you know, you, you're going to be a little rough on those shirts and, you know, they're work shirts, you're going to go through them. Um, so, you know, if you have an expensive work shirt, it may not, may not be worth, worth it. In some cases they are, we might get into that sometime later on but, um, because you're going to basically be beating on them. Um, so I'll bring that shirt with me and even on real cold days a lot of times I won't use that. I'll use it as a backup in case I, I you know, get one of the other shirts a little wet. Um, I'm not talking about falling in the water. I'm talking about you know snow gets on them and then because you didn't have something over them at the time and then it melts and gets wet and then maybe it's a little damp and you want to take that one off and 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 put a nice dry one on basically if you you mess up um, so there's that um, and then um, for top layer uh, again this particular coat is just one I beat on it's actually a pretty good coat I'm not going to mention the name of the company because I'm not not promoting it and I am not promoting it not either way um, and not because they're not a sponsor obviously but because I, I don't you know, I have nothing really against the shirt, but this coat, but I don't highly recommend it either. It's just a, a coat that someone gave me that worked. It's just a pullover coat. 
Uh, the important thing about it is it's insulated. Um, it does have armpit vents um, and it's got that nylonish material. It's water repellent um, and breaks wind for an outer layer. Um, and that's kind of what you want for your outer layer. But you also sometimes want, in this case, you want something that you, you know you can get grungy that you know you, you're not worried about destroying. Um, not that you're going to beat on it just for the heck of it, but it's going to get beat on. Um, so it's actually a pretty good company, but I'm pretty sure. But I'm not going to get into it because it's just a run-of-the-mill. To me, it's kind of a run-of-the-mill coat that I just got uh, to put on, um, and that's my top layer. And as we're talking about these layers, what happens is through the course of the day is maybe it gets war you're warmer or it gets warmer. You take that top layer off, then you take one of those one of those the layer underneath it off, and then put the top layer back on. Uh, and the reason why you put that top layer back on is because it has a wind resistance and it and the waterproof, and it protects those. It also helps protect those other layers underneath it. Um, in the case, especially in a case where you might have something nice underneath, as far as you know, you don't want it abrased and stuff like that. Uh, so you have that that outer layer, um, and then you you can do that again later on. You know, maybe I oh, took one layer off that was good for a little while, or maybe it was enough to take the next layer off, and then vice versa. You can put the stuff back on as the day cools down underneath, um, which. That's another thing I will say to you when you take the stuff off. It's common sense stuff, but you probably want to bring it back to the truck and put it in the truck, you know, not just hang it on the tree somewhere or, or something like that because it can get wet. Uh, moisture can get to it. So you might want to put that in the cab of the truck. Um, and then um, now I'm going to talk about some layers that might make it so you have less layers. Um, you know, because their insulating properties are very good. Um, so you might have replaced some of those layers with just a higher quality, uh, uh, higher quality uh, garment that retains the heat better so you don't have to, or in some cases does both, you know, it'll It'll retain the heat, but it'll wick away moisture, so it can regulate some. Um, if you're familiar with that, with materials that will regulate some, uh, wool is an awesome product. As a kid, you were like, "Get that stuff away from me! It itches." You hated it. But if you check out wool, uh, wool is even though it's old school, it, it's, uh, it's it's hard to explain, but wool, to this day, you can't really beat wool. Um, but, you can get virgin wool, which I highly recommend, and something that's got a blend to it, to makes it so that it's washable. Um, washable wools, as in wash in a washing machine and then drip dry. Um, highly, highly recommended stuff. Um, it's kind of the best of the, both worlds. Um, you don't want to have to bring your your work shirt to the dry cleaners, um, and but you also want to wash your your shirt more than once a season. Personally, I wash my shirt probably once a week, um, at least, and in most cases, I have a few shirts that. <laughs> I wear it during the week. I don't wear the same shirt all week, um, but um, the drawback to it is that it's not the itchiness because you've got the virgin wool and you've got the blend in it and it works really well um, and you can wash it by hand. The drawback to it is that um, is is that um, it's not cheap. Um, wool in a lot of places has become expensive, um, but um, you're probably gonna pay for a good washable wool. You're gonna pay, you know, upper 80s, 
and up from there, you know, 100, 120, 135, and then there are some that are way more than that. Personally, from what I've seen, when you start getting into the stuff that's way up above that, it isn't necessarily better, it's just more stylish or high-end kind of thing. Um, you know, not to say that there aren't some that are that are in that upper price range that actually are, um, you know, a wicked nice shirt. Um, but you can get a decent washable wool shirt in the, you know, if you're lucky, the high 80s, but more realistically, you know, around your 120, 135 range. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to talk about that um, I highly recommend that you get, which you can use for top layer, um, is um, a wool coat I have. Um, a company called Levon Bill makes it. Um, I've recommended some other stuff that they make. It's just good stuff. I have no affiliation with them or get any kickbacks or any of that. Um, just great stuff. A lot of it old school tech stuff um, that still applies today. Still great stuff. Um, they're lined on the inside. Um, they have an inside pocket. Um, you know, they have two hand pockets, one each side. They have these upper, upper pockets. Um, they've got snaps. And it snaps across the top here. Uh, this one has the nylon, which I highly recommend, the nylon upper part. There's still wool underneath this. Uh, they make this this way, and then they make one that this is wool too. It's an upper wool section. Um, I prefer the nylon because really it's plenty warm because again, there is wool underneath this. Um, and this way the snow that drops on your shoulders and stuff like that, when it occasionally happens, either there slides right off by itself um, or you can brush it off real easy, whereas snow tends to stick a little bit to the to the wool. Um, the other thing, I, as I didn't mention earlier, is that wool uh, even has um, even has insulation. In, I can't talk, but even has insulating properties when it's wet. Um, it's quite heavy when it's wet, but um, it still has insulating properties. So especially if you're in a situation where you couldn't get to a fire or get good dried out um, it still could keep you warm so in an emergency situation it, it could be uh, life-saving um, so but again this is a little bond mill bracket to run you about 150 bucks one thing i will tell you is um, my one pet peeve of them is they only come in, they only basically come in this, this, um, this classic pattern of black and red or, or, uh, black and green is the other one. Um, and, uh, I think they even had a black and blue at one point sometimes. Um, but that was a special thing. They don't do a solid color. I wish they'd do a solid black. Um, I think it would sell well. Um, but they do these traditional colors. Um, the only other pet peeve I've had about this scheme that's been around for a million years um, is that they do the same thing on like uh, they do the same thing on like flannel shirts, and it always annoyed me because it always reminded me of not that 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 uh, that that the flannel is not nice. Um, but it's not wool. And every time I see a flannel shirt that's made like these wool, are, uh, it's almost like it's imitation wool, but it's not. It doesn't have the itchy, itchy principles to it. And it wasn't made to really be like wool by any means, but, but it's just like, it just kind of annoys me. It's just one of those things. Um, so that's that. Um, and basically, You know, those layers will keep you warm. Another thing to do is um, military wool sweaters. 
they are awesome if you can get a hold of one um, grab it yeah. they're great especially with the nylon upper nylon like material upper parts um, stuff like that um, they make police issue ones that are that are the similar you don't want the fake one that's not really wool like it's an acrylic or whatever that's just kind of junk but if it's the real wool um, it's a very warm sweater um, it may not be the greatest fashion thing for some people and they have their high-tech sweaters but really I could care less and I think they look good <laughs> so that's me um, and you can get those sometimes you can get the military ones DX they would just use during basic in some uh, some or they're doing basic training in cold weather um, or something like that so it's only been worn a handful of times um, or you know you go to your your uh, if you have access to a PX um, you go in and buy the genuine thing for a pretty good price um, if you have a buddy um, you can go to you know an army surplus store buy them used and they're pretty easy to tell you know if they're the genuine thing and they look like they're in, they're in good shape you know you check them out then they're in good shape um, they got holes in them a different story um, some surplus stores will put them on the shelf with holes in them you know but you can find a decent one for cheap or you can buy them brand new um, and you can get the police issue sometimes um, through a catalog or something like that and there are some sweaters out in the market that are real wool sweaters that you can get through different companies as well um, so that basically covers um, covers you the rest of the way um, as far as keeping warm in cold weather um, I know that that wasn't an exciting video at all um, but it was it's just exactly what it is it's about keeping warm in the cold weather um, and the other thing I ask you to do is if you have any ways that you keep warm besides staying inside <laughs> And you have to work in the cold weather. Uh, be interested to know what what tricks or, or things you might use that work. Um, you know, and certainly more on the lines of being out there for for hours, not like you know you go from <laughs> you go for, you go out for an hour or something like that. Um, you know, a lot of people have to work out in the cold the whole day. They're not getting in and out of the truck. Um, in a lot of cases or they only get short periods of time in the truck or in a vehicle in a sheltered area so um, so please comment on the video um, I know it wasn't the most exciting video in the world by any means not that my videos are exceptionally exciting in any way but it just basically that's all it's about is keeping warm hope this video was helpful